Kraft presents the Great Gildersleeve. Yeah. The Kraft Cheese Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Kraft brings you the Great Gildersleeve every week at this time, written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. We'll hear from the Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. Naturally, husbands who work hard in the Victory Garden expect you to serve vegetables at their delicious best. And with the help of Pabstet, the delicious golden cheese food, you can do any vegetable up proud, make it better tasting and even more nourishing, too. Melted into a smooth, luscious cheese sauce, Pabstet adds rich, mellow cheddar cheese flavor to hot-cooked vegetables. Pabstet also gives salads an extra tasty touch, or it's equally delicious sliced and served with tomatoes or fruit. Pabstet spreads smoothly, too, and toasts to perfection for serving in many other delightful ways. And Pabstet is wholesome and nourishing. It's an excellent energy food, rich in protein and milk minerals, contains important vitamin A. So buy Pabstet as often as you can. Tomorrow, treat the whole family to this delicious golden cheese food. Don't forget, the name is Pabstet. <laughs> Let's see how things are going with the great Gildersleeve and his campaign for mayor. He's really hit his stride this week. He's made personal appearances at smokers, rallies, bridge luncheons, on street corners, and even at the fire that broke out in Frank Crutch's ice house. And for every occasion, he's had a ready song. Today, we find him with his niece and nephew in the honor box at the ballpark, leading a little singing before tossing out the first ball. Take me out to the Thank you. I'd just like to say, ladies and gentlemen, that nothing is closer to my heart than the great American game of baseball. Yes, sir, I'd like nothing better than to be right out there on that field with you boys today, knocking that old horse hide around. Why, I grew up in Sandlot baseball. What position did you play, Commissioner? Well, they always made me catcher, friend. Maybe because Mother Nature gave me my own chest protector. <laughs> that ain't all she gave you. <laughs> Uh, well, seriously, folks, baseball is a great institution. I haven't much use for any man who isn't a baseball fan. In fact, I wouldn't even trust a man who doesn't like baseball. By the way, where is my opponent, Mayor Terwilliger? I don't seem to see him here today. <laughs> That's telling him uh, I don't mean to imply that his honor doesn't know how to play baseball. He'll play ball with anybody, ladies and gentlemen. He's proved that. And he's stolen plenty of bases when the taxpayers weren't looking either. <laughs> However... Oh, let's get on with the game. Uh, yeah, you're right, my friend. <laughs> let's have the ball, Leroy. Here, let's see how far you can heave it. Don't you worry about that, my boy. Hey, ready out there? Yeah, come on. Oh, brother, what a wind-up. Play ball! Oh, hey! The ball! Hey, look, duck lady, duck! Hey, look, duck lady, duck! He almost hit a woman. Uh, sorry, madam. <laughs> a little out of training, I'm afraid. <laughs> Toss it out in the field, somebody. <laughs> you must have been some pitcher, Unc. I told you, Leroy, I was a catcher. How did you ever throw the second? I always put him out at first. <laughs> now shut up and let's watch the game. Unc, can I buy a hot dog? It's too early in the game to start that. Well, if I buy it with my own money, can I, huh, Unc? Can I, huh? You haven't got any money and you know it. Well, yeah, you want to see it? I got 15 cents left over from... Hey, hey, I did have it. I had it right in my pocket. Oh, somebody stole it. I have 15 cents right here in my pants. Now, now, don't get excited, Leroy. Empty your pocket first. But if you didn't carry so much junk around. Yes. Ye gods, Leroy. Well, I need it. That's all valuable stuff. A knife, skate key, pebbles, rusty nail, rubber band, eraser, old hinge, marble, milky button. <laughs> What's this envelope, Leroy? Oh, that? Yes, that. It's addressed to me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a note. 
from Miss Goodwin. I forgot to give it to you. When did she give you this, young man? I guess it must have been yesterday. Huh? Um, maybe it was the day before. Oh, my goodness. It's all right, Unc. I found it. It's not all right, Leroy. When you're asked to deliver a note, you should deliver it. But I found the 15 cents yep. in the other pocket. Now can I buy a hot dog, can I? I don't care what you do. Oh, boy, one side, Marge. Careful. Well, pull in your big feet. Yes. What does the note say, Uncle Marge? I don't know. I'm just reading it, Marjorie. Marjorie. I wasn't reading it. Gosh, if this note is two days old, I don't know what she must be thinking. I better get over there right now. Oh, look, they're going to start the game. Who gets the bat first, Uncle Marge? Uncle Marge? Uncle Marge! Where did he go? Dear Throckmorton, it seems as if I'd hardly seen you for weeks. I know you've been busy with your campaign, and I'm very proud of you. I've been busy, too, working late every afternoon. But couldn't we play a little hooky together just once? <laughs> she misses me. Besides, I have some good news for you. So do let's try to get together real soon. Your loving Eve. <laughs> well, I'm not the man to keep her waiting. Come in. Uh... My name is Throckmorton. I was told to come to the principal's office. <laughs> oh, Throckmorton, you silly. Miss Benson sent me down here because I was a bad boy. <laughs> I'm, I'm the worst boy in 6A. Oh, really? Well, what did you do that was naughty? I kissed every girl in the room except Miss Benson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's terrible. Uh? Stand in the corner and recite the multiplication table a hundred times. Oh, Eve, we can think of something that's more fun than that, can't we? <laughs> uh, are you through with your work? Well, not quite. Now, be fair, Eve. As soon as Leroy gave me your note, I dropped my work. What were you doing? Watching a ball game. <laughs> Come on, Eve. It's a beautiful day. Let me take you home. I'll carry your books. Well... Come on. I'll even buy you soda. I'll hold your hand under the counter. I'll... That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> Morton, what are you doing? Oh, nothing. Well, you're walking so peculiarly, I can't keep in step with you. Oh, <laughs> I'm trying to step on all the cracks. <laughs> oh, my goodness, a grown man. Well, Eve, don't you ever do things like that? Never. You miss a lot of fun. Sometimes I step on all the cracks, and sometimes I try not to step on any. It's fun to walk with your eyes shut, too. You want to see me? No. It I'll show you what's even more fun than that, if I can find a stick. Throck, Morton, I don't know what's come over you. Yeah, here's a stick that's made to order, Eve. All right, what are you going to do with it? Well, I could spank you, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> you better not. Yeah, wait till we come to Mr. Lawler's picket fence. Well, of all the ways to entertain a girl. What can I do? I can't kiss you here in the street. Or can I? No. <laughs> well, all right then, listen to this. <laughs> Let me try it. Sure, go out. I must say it's more fun than I thought. What did I tell you? <laughs> Wish there was more fence. Huh? <laughs> There'll be some more a little farther along, Eve. Let's hold hands and skip. What do you say? Rock Morton, I'm the principal of the Summerfield Grammar School. That's nothing. I'm the water commissioner. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Doc Morton, you're impossible today. Yeah, what do I care? Doc <laughs> Morton, I don't understand you. Huh? What do you mean, Eve? You're not human. I told you in my note that I had some news for you. And you haven't even asked what it is. I forgot all about it. What is it? Oh, I don't think I'll tell you now. That's no fair, Eve. Now you got me all curious. Come on, what is it? No, I don't feel like telling. Please, Eve. No. Will you tell me if I buy you a soda? Here's a drugstore. Mm, I might. Come on, then. But I might not. Oh, look, Mr. Peavy's got a new sign in the window. Fresh strawberry sundaes guaranteed to please. <laughs> <laughs> Talented, Eve. <laughs> will, a, uh, will a strawberry sundae make you talk? 
If it's good, it will. <laughs> It'll be good, and I hope it makes you talk better than that. <laughs> <laughs> After you, my love. Good afternoon, Miss Goodwin. <laughs> good afternoon. Hello, Peavy. We want two of your fresh strawberry sundaes. Now, if you don't like them, we want our money back. I think you'll find them very enjoyable. I had quite a run on them today. Oh? <laughs> here, sit down here, Eve. We'll watch the great artist at work. Thank you. Please. Darn it, TV, why don't you put some booths for your soda customers? Can't you afford a booth? Well, I've got a phone booth. <laughs> All right, we'll have our Sundays in there. <laughs> How about it, Eve? Isn't he awful, Mr. Peavy? Oh, he's only joking, Miss Goodwin. He can't get in the phone booth himself, let alone... <laughs> <laughs> Here's your Sundays, folks. You like a few chopped nuts sprinkled on top? Oh, yes. It's uh, a nickel extra. Oh, that's all right, Peavy. I feel like throwing money around today anyway. Well, uh, glad you dropped in. You don't happen to need any straight little drub items like uh, aspirin? Yeah, now, now, don't try to sell me the store, Peavy. I came in here to make this lady talk. This strawberry Sunday is supposed to uh, loosen her tongue. Mm, I think maybe it will, too. This is delicious, Mr. Peavy. Mm, thank you, ma'am. Uh, Miss Goodwin keeping a secret from you, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yes, he's trying to, Peavy. I ask you, is that a nice thing for a man's fiancé to do? Well, that's customary. <laughs> the ladies like having their little secrets. Every so often, Mrs. Peavy gets some little piece of information about one of the neighbors and holds on to it. Oh? Just devils you with it, eh, Peavy? Well, she likes to tease me a little, yeah. <laughs> Just a few days ago, for instance, she had an item on Mr. Wheeler. He lives two doors down from us. Uh, Charlie Wheeler? Mm. Oh, what was it, Peavy? Well, I can't tell you that, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, you don't have to. Poor old Charlie. I bet it was something about his... <laughs> <laughs> you ought to be ashamed of yourself, Dr. Horton. You're right, though, Mr. Gildersleeve. It was that little habit. Mr. Peavy, why, you men are the worst gossips I ever saw. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. No. <laughs> I guess everybody likes hearing juicy little things about their neighbors. Well, I'm certainly not interested. I scarcely know Mr. Wheeler. Of course, the Wheeler children are in school, and they're a bit of a problem. I know Mrs. Wheeler very slightly. Does he beat her? <laughs> I'll tell you if you tell me your secret, Eve. Come on, what is it? Well, mine isn't gossip. Mine is just good news. Oh, good news, eh? What is it? My mother's coming to visit me tomorrow. Huh? <laughs> Liz, is that all you have to say? I've told you how much Mother means to me, Throckmorton. Oh, yes, I think it's fine that she's coming, Eve. Great, I can't wait to meet her. <laughs> I was hoping you could drive me over to Moore's Junction and meet her train tomorrow morning. Oh, certainly, fine. Glad to do it, Eve. Uh, how much are the Sundays, Peavy? Oh, Fifty cents, Mr. Gildersleeve. That includes the nuts. Nuts? Oh, yes, yes. Well, here you are. Uh, all through, Eve? Yes, thank you. Yeah, that's certainly fine about your mother. So long, Peavy. Uh, see you later. Goodbye, Mr. Peavy. Goodbye, Mr. Gildersleeve. Goodbye, Miss Goodwin. My, my, she never found out about Charlie Wheeler's little peculiarity. Well, for that piece of news she had, she didn't deserve to. Greg Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a few seconds. And now more about that tempting golden cheese food that spreads, slices, and melts, tastes good, and is mighty good for you. It's Pabstet, of course. Pabstet, the delicious golden cheese food of a hundred uses. Pabstet spreads like butter at room temperature, slices neatly when chilled, melts quickly and easily into a smooth, luscious cheese sauce. And what grand variety. Pabstet macaroni dishes, Pabstet soufflés and omelets, Pabstet sandwiches, fish and egg treats with Pabstet cheese sauce. And dozens more, all extra delicious, extra nourishing with this marvelous cheese food added. Your dealer may not have Pabstet the very first time you ask for it because so much dairy food is going to war. But everything is being done to keep dealers supplied. So watch for Pabstet in the familiar round flat package. And when you can, buy this wholesome, nourishing cheese food, Pabstet. <laughs> Let's get back now to Summerfield and the Great Gildersleeve. By George, I don't know how the old bus gets so dirty. I had it washed only last February. 
please. Thank you, Bertie. Yeah, now we can get started. We? Uh, ever washed a car, Bertie? No, sir. Can't say that I have. Oh, it's an experience, Bertie, an experience. What's the way I do it? And you'll know how to do it yourself, if the occasion should ever arise. Yes, sir. I can see it arising. <laughs> may seem like a simple thing, washing a car, Bertie, but there's a right way and a wrong way to do everything. Yes, sir. Now, the first step is to remove the dirt. That sounds reasonable. Yeah. Watch. Watch closely now, Bertie. You observe that I take the sponge and immerse it in the water until saturated. You do what? I take the sponge and dunk it, Bertie. <laughs> now, with the sponge soaking wet, I start at the top of the car, and uh, <laughs> it's running down my sleeve, Bertie. It's cold. Hmm. You ought to roll up your sleeves, Mr. Gilsey. Well, that's not so easy. I have my good clothes on. But you haven't any sleeves, Bertie. I tell you, Mr. Gilsey, why don't you use the hose instead of the sponge? That would be easier and you wouldn't get so wet. Hose. That's a good idea, Bertie. A very good idea. You're catching on very quickly. Drag it over here, will you? Yes, sir, I'll get it. You seem to have a knack for this sort of thing, Bertie. I wouldn't be surprised if I could entrust the whole job to you before long. I wouldn't be surprised either. Here you are. <laughs> Fine. Now, you go turn it on. Good afternoon, Soft Martin. Lula. Well, hello. Washing your car, Soft Martin. Yeah, just washing the car. Oh, oh you... gracious. Look out. Stand back, Lula. You'll get all wet. Now, don't you point that hose at me, Soft Martin. You hear? Oh, I wouldn't, Lila. Because if you did, I'd just never forgive you. Understand? Don't you dare to squirt it at me. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. Now, Throckmorton. Look out, Lily. Here I come. Oh, no, no, protect me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, turn it off, Bertie. Turn off the hose. Throckmorton, oh, girl, to sleeve. I declare you're the worst mine. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, no, it isn't, Bertie, but I'll get around to it. Uh, tell me, wh what are you washing your car for? You must be stepping out somewhere, huh? Not exactly, Leela. Eve's mother is arriving tomorrow. Oh, your mother-in-law. No, she did. Well, I suppose she will be at that. Oh, you poor boy. <laughs> I know just how you feel. Now, Leela, Eve's mother is not like that. Eve's mother is different. Mm. Eve's mother is very close to her. They're more like sisters. How nice. You met her then. No, but Eve's told me all about her. I see. Shall I turn on the hose, Miss Gill, please? Uh, just a minute, Bertie. I I've got to go now, Throckmorton, but I'd just like to say one thing. Yes? If you ever need someone to sympathize with you, if you ever need someone to turn to, remember, I'm right next door. But I tell you, <laughs> I like Eve's mother. Darn it, I like her. Goodbye now. Turn on the hose, Bertie. Okay, Miss Gilfrey. Hello, Leela. Leaving? Yes, I have to, Joe. Oh, my goodness. Well, Gildy, washing your car. What do you think I'm doing? Taking a bath? <laughs> watch it, watch it. Yeah, hold it, Bertie. Turn it off a minute. What's the big occasion, Gildy? What big occasion? Washing the car. How come? Neighbors complain? <laughs> my mother-in-law is arriving in the morning. Your mother-in-law. Well, that is my mother-in-law-to-be. Deepest sympathy, old man. Deepest sympathy. She's only coming for a few days, Judge, and she's staying with her daughter. So there. Uh-huh. Coming to town to look you over, huh? Well, I suppose so. Only natural for a mother to want to know what kind of a man her daughter is marrying. What are you going to do when she finds out? <laughs> <laughs> now listen, you old goat. Turn on the water, Bertie. <laughs> I didn't mean it, Gildy. Only joking. Yeah. Hey! Yeah. Run along, Judge, or by gosh, hey. I'll let you have it. Can't you take a joke? Sure, can't you? Dance, Judge, no. dance. No! <laughs> What's going on, Mr. Gildersleeve? Oh, hello, Peavy. What's that you say? What's going on? You're washing your car? Can't hear you. I'm washing my car. <laughs> hey, turn it off, Bertie. Now, what'd you say, Peavy? I see you're washing your car. Yes, Peavy, I'm washing my car. Uh, planning to take the family out for a little spin, Mr. Gildersleeve? No, Peavy, I'm planning to go down and meet my future mother-in-law at the train tomorrow morning. I want the car to look nice. Oh, mother-in-law, huh? And no remarks, see? Oh, I wasn't going to make any remarks. Well, everybody else has. I have a mother-in-law myself. That is, I did up to the time she passed on. Well, my mother-in-law isn't like most mother-in-laws, Peavy. My mother-in-law is different. That's what I used to say. 
Mother Horsefall, I always called her. She she liked to have me call her mother. My wife's name was Horsefall. Uh, I hope so. And so was her mother's, yeah. Mother Horsefall. Mother Horsefall. I've always had a sneaking fondness for the old girl. Well, I'm glad to hear you say so, Peavy. Yes, we got along pretty well for the first few months, but after that... Uh, well, such is life. With that thought, Mr. Gildersleeve, I'll leave you. Good day. <laughs> Good day, Peavy. The idea. Mr. Gildersleeve, how about it? Let it go, Bertie. Why can't they let me alone? Why can't they let me polish my car? Oh, the devil with a car. Let the old lady ride in it the way it is. <laughs> Thanks, Doc Morton. I haven't seen Mother in almost a year. Oh, that's all? Well, I'm excited, aren't you? You bet. I was hoping you'd find time to wash the car. Oh, well, I was going to, but some things came up. <laughs> How much farther is it to the station? Another four or five miles. We got lots of time. I wouldn't want to be late. Don't worry. Uh, how about a little kiss, just to pass the time? Hmm? Oh, now, dear, please be sensible. Not while you're driving. All right. Why are we so late? You said to be sensible. <laughs> <laughs> now... How about a kiss? Throckmorton, Morton, you think of making love at the strangest times. What's strange about 10 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> but we're hurrying to meet a train. Please, Throckmorton, Morton, I'd just die if we were late. We can't possibly. Please. Please, darling. Just one kiss? Just one. Oh, you're wonderful. Mm. <laughs> The train is through at 10.27, dear. How can you be thinking about timetables? Well, after all, it's my mother. We must go on, Throckmorton. All right. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Is the ignition on? Oh, sure. I'll choke her a little. <laughs> she must be flooded. <laughs> this old bus gets that way once in a while. She does? Yeah, but don't worry. I know her like a book. Just left to let her sit there for a minute. I wish we hadn't stopped. Now, Eve, there's nothing to worry about. Thirty seconds and we'll be on our merry way. Well, you can't blame me for being nervous. <clears throat> can't you try it now? Too soon, Eve. I know this car like a book. Oh, dear. Yeah, give it a few seconds more. Now, she'll start off like a B-24. Is the ignition on? Oh, yes, it's on. <laughs> well, I... Just have to look under the hood, I guess. Check a few things. Oh, dear, this is awful. <laughs> this won't take a second, my dear. Are you sure there's gas in the tank? Oh, yeah, I put in two gallons just this morning. <laughs> the needle isn't even touching the E. What are you pounding? Don't worry, I fixed it this way once before. <laughs> you just leave it to me, my dear. Men understand such things. That's what men think. What's that, Eve? Oh, Nothing. Please hurry, Throckmorton. Ye gods, what can I do? Do you want me to give you a piggyback ride to Moore's Junction? Well, there's no need to lose your temper, Throckmorton. I just thought if you'd stop some car that's going by, there might be someone who could help you. I'm perfectly capable of finding the trouble, Eve, and I can fix it, too. So just relax, for heaven's sake. Very well, Throckmorton. Uh, leave me alone a minute so I can concentrate. Oh, dear, poor mother. Throckmorton! I know, I heard it. Sake. What's it now, Eve? Do you realize my mother's been sitting in that station for half an hour? Yes, and I wish you were sitting there with her. Oh! Uh, oh, I didn't mean that, Eve. It kind of slipped out. I mean, I'm doing the best I can, Eve. Haven't you found out what's wrong yet? Well, no, but if I... For goodness sake. It seems to me that... What's that wire hanging down there? Wire? Well, what wire? This one. It ought to go somewhere. It could go right here. No, no, Eve. That's part of the radio. I don't think so. Hook it on here. Huh? Uh, there. Now, why don't you try the starter? It couldn't be that. Well, try it, Throckmorton. Well, all right, Eve. Couldn't possibly be that. No, 
afraid it's not that. <laughs> I didn't think so. Did you have the ignition on, Throckmorton? Ignition? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, what do you know about that? Some people are born lucky. Not a soul around the station. I just know the train got an hour to go. It wasn't due till 1027. If anything's happened to Mother, I'll never forgive you, never. Nothing's happened to your mother, Eve. She'll be around somewhere if she's got any sense. That's right. Blame the whole thing on Mother. Eve, I'm not blaming on anybody. I just... Uh, look, could that be her? Where? Over there, sitting on the barrel. Mother. Mother, we're here. Eve, darling. Oh, thank goodness. How long have you waited? No, oh, I thought you'd never guess. Well, yes. I looked around, and when I didn't see you, I just said to myself, I don't... Oh, this, I suppose, it must be. Yes, this is Rockmorton. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, my daughter has written me so much about you. Well, favorable, I hope. Oh, yes. Oh, very. Oh, dear, yes. <laughs> but she wrote uh, me only... Rockmorton. Huh? Oh, her bags. Oh, yes. I'm afraid they're terribly heavy. Uh, can't be too heavy for me. Uh, the car is this way. I feel I ought to apologize to you for being so late. Oh, not at all. It just gave me time to finish my magazine. Well, you see, something went wrong. The with... whole thing was Throckmorton's fault. If he hadn't insisted on stopping, the car would never have stalled. And if he'd used his head and done as I asked him to, we wouldn't have been all day getting started. But Eve... I was never so furious with anyone in my life. Why, Eve Goodwin, I don't think that's a nice way to talk about a nice man like Mr. Gildersleeve. Here he's carrying my bags, and he's driven all the way down here to meet me. I think that's very nice of him indeed. Oh, but, Mother, you don't understand. I think uh, Mr. Gildersleeve seems like just about the nicest son-in-law anyone ever had. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Mrs. Goodwin. Uh, call me Mother. Uh, you know, Mother, I've been telling people you're not like other mother-in-laws. You're different. And by George, you are. Why, if you were 20 years younger, or if I were 20 years older... Yes? Uh... But we're not, are we? <laughs> hey, maybe we better be getting along. <laughs> Dear diary, well, you have to expect these little misunderstandings, I guess. I guess you have to take the bitter with the sweet. That's part of the fun of being in love. Give and take. That's what real love is based on. Gosh, you can't really be in love with a girl if you get all upset over every little thing. <laughs> Who was it said that forgiveness is the greatest of all virtues? Well, I forgive her. But by George, she's not going to tell me how to run my car. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> On this program is directed by Claude Sweeten. This is Ken Carpenter speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company, makers of Carquet Margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Kraft invites you to listen again next week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Today, America's bakers are making so much good bread, bread that's enriched for even better nutrition, you want to eat plenty of it and enjoy it more, too by spreading your bread with delicious parquet margarine. This quality spread for bread that's made by Kraft, yes, Kraft makes parquet margarine, has a flavor that's both delicate and appetizing. Parquet adds flavor goodness that makes bread and hot toast, biscuits and muffins taste so good. And parquet margarine also adds extra nourishment to these wholesome foods because every pound contains 9,000 units of important vitamin A. Besides that, parquet is also high in food energy. Tomorrow, then, when you buy bread, buy enriched bread. And tomorrow, when you buy a spread for bread, buy a vitamin-fortified spread. Buy Parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft.